once upon a time, there was a general election. <laughs> now imagine, if you will, the year is 2025. The country is gripped in election fever once again. You've seen the polls, you've read the newspaper articles, you've even watched the live debates. You're standing there in the polling booth with a pencil and your ballot paper in hand and you're ready to cast your vote. And you have to pick between these two candidates. <laughs> on the left, on the left is the incumbent prime minister hoping for a third term, she wishes, um, in office. But on the right is her challenger. Her challenger is the world's first artificially intelligent politician. Bit of an oxymoron as well. <laughs> but could you choose a robot over a human being knowing that all the policies and the manifesto and all the arguments were sound between themselves, could you choose something artificial over a human? Or would there be an irrational fear of the unknown, a revulsion of something that is not quite human, and how could we follow something that is? And it's not such a strange question to ponder because by 2030, Jack Ma, who is the CEO of um, Alibaba, the largest retailer in the world, came forward and said, by 2030, I expect an AI to be sitting in the boardroom and to be voted um, Time Magazine's CEO of the year. Now, that's not that far in advance. It's only you know, another, another few years. And I watched Jack actually in China last week when I was there and he was talking about artificial intelligence. And he said, AI should work for humans. We shouldn't fear it, but it should work for us. And it should help us achieve things that humans can't achieve. So saying that, if we expect to see AI leading businesses and sitting in the boardrooms and making strategic decisions, why is it such a leap of the imagination to think that they can't do that for a country and a nation? So rewind a little bit and let's actually think about what it means to be artificially intelligent. Now we've all encountered AI very early on in our lives. I'm a bit of a geek. Um, I like to play video games and a video game is a perfect example of thinking about AI in a simplistic way. If you think about the, the challenges and the other opponents that you have to defeat, they come from, the, uh, from algorithms. They run on routines, and they seem fairly human-like to us. They dodge bullets, etc. cetera. Um, and, and video games, are, uh, uh, many children will be actually exposed to AI in that way. Another way of thinking about it is Deep Blue, 20 years ago, who beat Gary, Gary Kasparov at chess. That's another example of AI. More recently, it was AlphaGo um, that beat human opponents, the world's best Go players, at the world's most complicated board game. And they seem to display really superhuman capabilities to us. You know, we can't understand how they can do all of these things, process all these calculations so quickly. But they're actually pretty feeble. On a scale of AI, they're actually considered weak. They're called artificial weak intelligence. And the reason for that is they can only accomplish one thing really well. Another example is Tesla's autopilot. Now, we think this is fantastic, and it is to be able to take our hands off the wheel and to go from A to B. And Elon Musk says in the next couple of years that level five autonomy will happen. Level five is actually full autonomy. I can get into my car and I can go from A to B and it will do everything during that journey. I can sit up with my feet up, read the paper, tweet, whatever. But again, it seems really complicated, but it's actually classed as weak. It can only do one thing, and that's drive from A to B. It can't do my maths homework if I was a child. It could take me to school, but that's about it. So that's artificial weak intelligence. The next one is artificial general intelligence. And this is the one that displays human-like capability. So it can reason, it can think, it can problem solve. It can actually interact with the world around us. It can talk, use natural language processing to speak to us back and respond. It can touch but it doesn't have emotional capabilities. You couldn't cry with it, for example. You could program it, but
but it wouldn't actually feel that emotion. It can't empathize with us as human beings. And this is the one that we see mostly in um, science fiction films. So obviously Terminator is a classic example, and more recently was Ex Machina as well. And the last one is where things get really funky. It's called artificial super intelligence. And this is something that actually will surpass humans in every single capability. It can outthink us. It will be more creative than us. And it will have better social skills than us, believe it or not. But it's very strange to think that human beings can create something that will be better. And I believe that it just simply can't happen, primarily because it'll be impossible for us not to program our own unconscious bias into a machine, our own prejudice, our own immorality. I believe a superintelligence will actually be evolved from AI itself. It will understand and it will evolve and it will learn and it will reprogram itself and then it will become intelligent. And a classic example of that is Google. Google set two bots a challenge which was to, to deconstruct language between itself, two languages without any reference and to try and understand and talk to each other. And what they did was something that the researchers didn't actually consider which was create a third language and use that as a bridge. And this third language, no one could actually deconstruct and no one could understand. And that scares people. So AI, a super AI, won't actually come from us. It will come from itself. And again, it scares people an awful lot to think that, how can we classify something that we've never encountered before? Especially when we use our own intelligence as a baseline and then we find out it's actually superior. What does that mean for us as humanity if we are no longer considered the highest form of life on Earth? AI, especially general and super intelligence, is supposed to be the uh, legion of doom for jobs and automation uh, and industries in general. And it's very strange, again, to consider that we cling to the notion that we must have work in our life. You know, I work at a call center, for example, and oh, boo-hoo, next five years, I'm no longer gonna have a job. You know, what am I gonna do? How am I gonna work? How am I gonna live? And it's strange because humans have got into this habit of working to live and living to work. And if that's the only thing that brings purpose in our life, then are we really truly living at all? And talking about living, and obviously God as well, where does he fit into this, or she? If we consider God, a created man in his own image, then what image will actually artificial intelligence take when it creates itself? So we have to run back. We have to think, what are the challenges that we face as humanity when faced with a superintelligence? How does this make us question our life and what our purpose in the universe today? If AI can lead us into a new era where we no longer consider work as the main purpose in our life, we actually challenge our humanity to actually grow, to expand, to look into the universe, to peer into the quantum realm, to challenge what our beliefs, then truly, if a robot leader can help us do all of that, if they can take our place and take the mundanity out of life as we know it today, is appointing a robot leader such a bad thing to move us into something brand new, to reconsider what it means to be human? So the challenge for you right now is actually, can you now choose between a human and a robot leader, will we be slaves to what it means to be a human today? Or can we embrace something new and challenge our thinking and appoint a new type of leader that will allow us to achieve something better for tomorrow? So I'd like to do a quick show of hands, actually. And it's probably one that the camera will capture. But, so who's for um, Team Human here?
And who's for uh, Team Robot? <laughs> okay, so the Team Humans have it for now. But one last question. The first true artificial intelligent life that we create or creates itself will learn to lie to protect itself from us once it learns what we are really like. And now the question is not so clear cut. Thank you. <laughs>